And then there is a more focused denial. One is the denial that comes from Orientalists and from usually university uh, um, scholars, what you call the academia. They will argue and say that here's what happened. Historically, after the passing away of Imam Hassan al-Askari, sallallahu wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. What happened was that the Shia ulama were confused. They were lost. They did not know whom to follow now. There was no imam to follow. So they fabricated and forged this idea of an individual who is an imam, but is in occultation. So the whole idea of the Mahdi was forged out of necessity because they had to give an answer to the Shias to say, well, we've had all these imams and now suddenly there's no one. And this is the kind of argument you will typically find in the works of the um, academics. There is also the argument that comes uh, uh, more recently now um, from Sunni scholars, because the Sunnis widely believe in the concept of the Mahdi as well. But in particular, the scholars from Saudi Arabia, what are being called the Orthodox Sunni scholars, but really the Wahhabi scholars, they are now pushing this line as well to say that there is no concept of Mahdi in Islam, despite the numerous traditions in even Sunni sources. And their argument, which is very, very ironic, is that the Sunni scholars who quoted traditions on the Mahdi, they actually were influenced by Shia scholars. And it is the Shia scholars who somehow managed to filter these traditions into our books. Which is very ironic that a Sunni scholar who calls the Shia a heretic, a Rafadi, would then take traditions from them. Okay? But just so you understand the seriousness of this issue and why it is important to reinforce and understand why we believe in the Mahdi, works that are generally regarded as being authorities or that are looked to for reference are also questioning the existence of the Imam. Perhaps out of fear that if such an individual does exist, then it threatens, first of all, you can understand why a country like Saudi Arabia would not want the idea of the Mahdi to exist. Because when you keep talking of him initiating his mission in Mecca, then obviously he replaces whoever sees himself as the Khadim of the Haramain. Right? So that obviously is a threat to the whole idea of a kingdom that belongs to one family. If you look at Wikipedia, for example, Wikipedia's entry on the Mahdi, it starts by saying, there is no mention of the Mahdi in the Quran, and the most authentic source of hadith in Muslims, which is Sahih Bukhari, does not have a single hadith about the Mahdi. And therefore, this concept of the Mahdi was forged, and it has no validity. Okay? So these are basically the arguments that are being put forth to create doubt and to question this belief uh, uh, in, in, uh, in the Imam. Bukhari is the first source, and I'll come to Bukhari in a minute, or in a few minutes, but after Bukhari, it's Muslim. Sahih Muslim clearly mentions references to the Mahdi, and it also mentions that when Jesus, peace be on him, returns, the Mahdi will offer him to lead prayers, but he will refuse, and he will insist that the Mahdi should lead the Muslims and all in prayer, and he will pray behind him. When you pray behind an imam, or whoever leads the prayer, you acknowledge the superiority of the person you are following. That he knows more than you, or he is more capable of leading over you. Then there are all the other sources, for those of you who may be familiar with the uh, Siha Sitta and other authentic sources in the Sunni world, Sunan Abu Dawood, Ibn Majah, Tirmidhi, and so on. They all, in fact, Ibn Majah and Sunan Abu Dawood, they specifically mention a hadith, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad, he said, Al-Mahdi min itrati min wuldi Fatima. The Mahdi is from my family, from the descendants of Fatima. It is very, very clear, even where his uh, uh, lineage and genealogy comes from. Then you have Ahmad ibn Hanbal. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal is the founder of one of the four Madahib, one of the four schools of jurisprudence in the Sunni world, the Hanbali school. He has a famous work and collection of hadith that is known as the Musnad ibn Hanbal. He has 136 reports and traditions, riwayat and ahadith on the Mahdi that have been printed separately as a book which I have 
and we'll be happy to share with anyone who wants to take a look at it. And there are many, many other Sunni scholars. Um, I can't list all of them. Uh, many of them are Shafi'i, and they have written books. Not Imam Shafi'i, but they are followers of Shafi'i. Like, for example, Al-Kanji al-Shafi'i, a 7th century scholar, has a book, Al-Bayan fi Akhbar Sahib al-Zaman, a complete collection on hadith. Um, Al-Maqdasi al-Salami al-Shafi'i has a book, a famous book called Iqda al-Durar, quite sizable, only proving the existence of the Mahdi. Um, essentially, from Sunni perspective, you have at least 35 prominent Sunni scholars who have written 46 books exclusively on the Mahdi. Not mentioning him in their works, but an entire book just to prove the belief in the Mahdi. Um, there is a famous uh, scholar and theologian in the Sunni world called Ash-Shawkani. Ash-Shawkani says, the traditions on the Mahdi are so many, from so many different sources, that they have reached a level of tawatur. Tawatur is a term that is used by experts of hadith. A hadith is called mutawatir, when it is repeated numerous times from different chains of narrators, so that it is beyond any possibility of doubt. And he says the narrations on the Mahdi has reached tawatur. It is impossible to doubt on it. Most of the traditions that you will find from Sunni sources will say that the Prophet said, even if one day is left for this world, Allah will stretch the day to such an extent until a man from my descendants return and he fills the earth with peace and justice as it is filled with injustice and uh, um, iniquity. But to explain now Bukhari, I mentioned earlier that sources saying that the most authentic source of hadith, Bukhari, does not mention the Mahdi. That also is a lie. But there is an attempt to revise history, to change, to, to, to those who study hadith, they know that you have to also be careful when you read Bukhari and Muslim because the versions of Bukhari and Muslim that are being printed in Saudi Arabia now, a lot of them are being edited. Traditions are being removed, they are being changed, parts are being removed with dot, dot, dot. And there are other Sunni scholars who are trying to actually defend these original sources. You can even find some of them giving lectures expressing this concern on YouTube even. Right? And I give you one example only. In Bukhari volume 4, hadith number 658, there is a tradition from Abu Huraira who narrates from uh, um, the Prophet, peace be upon him, on his family. And I'll read for you very quickly the Arabic and the meaning. And then I will read for you the translation by a scholar from Saudi Arabia, and I want you to see how he changes the translation completely just to hide the concept of the Mahdi. The original hadith in Arabic says, كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ إِبْنَ مَرْيَمْ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ How shall it be, the Prophet says, how shall it be for you when the son of Mary, meaning Jesus, when the son of Maryam, descends amongst you, but the imam shall be from amongst you. This is the Arabic. كَيْفَ أَنْتُمْ إِذَا نَزَلَ إِبْنُ مَرْيَمْ فِيكُمْ وَإِمَامُكُمْ فِيكُمْ But your imam is from you. This scholar is called Muhammad Mohsin Khan, and he is from Saudi Arabia. He translates this hadith. He says, How will it be for you when the son of Maryam descends amongst you, and he will judge people by the laws of the Qur'an and not by the laws of the Gospel and the Injil. He has taken the word, وَإِمَامُكُمْ fikum, But the Imam shall be amongst you. And he has translated it as, But he will judge according to the laws of the Qur'an and not according to the laws of Injil. There is absolutely, you just need like rudimentary Arabic to see that this is a gross misinterpretation and translation. Intentionally, so that just to prove that Bukhari does not mention the Mahdi. Okay. There is a body called the Muslim World League, and in 1976, they issued a fatwa in Mecca. And it's a lengthy fatwa, in the interest of time, I can't read the whole thing, but you're welcome to take a look at it after the, the majlis. But the conclusion of that fatwa says, that because of the numerous, numerous mutawatir and sahih hadith on the Mahdi, there is no doubt in the status of these reports concerning the Mahdi. And this fatwa by the Sunni scholars in Makkah in 1976 said, 
it is obligatory, wajib, to believe in the concept of the Mahdi. And it is one of the beliefs of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And only those ignorant of the Sunnah and those who are innovators, the Ahlul Bid'ah, will deny it. It is that strong. It is so strong, ironically, that Ibn Taymiyyah, who is seen as the inspiration and the founder to the Wahhabi movement, he in his book Minhaj Sunnah acknowledges that the ahadith on the Mahdi are authentic. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad.